Today we're going to start <clears throat> studying bending in beams, and this is really the heart of the course. It only will expose you to beam bending, which is an important engineering structure, but it will also introduce more sophisticated con concepts of stress, where there will be normal and shear stress combined. And so a beam is just simply a structural member that's undergoing only lateral loads. That's kind of the traditional definition of a beam. And in particular, we're going to be looking today at the development of strain. We're going to develop a strain in beams. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the case of pure bending. This idea of pure bending is going to assist the theoretical developments, but then what we're going to do almost immediately is apply the theory in contexts where it is not pure bending, but realizing that the bending moments are much larger than the shear forces, so it's still a reasonable engineering approximation. So when you have a beam in pure bending, it means that the beam is going to deflect into a perfect circular arc. And that's the kind of the geometric foundation for what we're going to be doing. So if we have a, a beam here, okay, and pure bending means we apply one, one instance of pure bending would be just to apply loads at the end. Okay. Now if you look at this shear diagram for this guy, it's going to be zero. There will be no shear. But if you look at the bending moment, it's going to be a constant value equal to m. And so this is one example of pure bending, where you have this kind of a loading. And the deflection, again, is going to be a circular arc. That's the reason that we're looking at this example. The coordinate system is going to be like this. So this is going to be the y-axis. Then the axis running through the centroid of the beam is going to be the x-axis, and then the coordinate system coming out of the out of the board is the z-axis. So if you were to look at a cross section, this is y, this is z, and then this is out of the board. All right, and then this is the cross section of the beam. Okay, so again. This idea of pure bending is a little bit contrived, but it allows us to come up with a very clean definition for strain in beam bending. So that's the motivation here. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at some geometry. So if you had a beam and it deflected, let's say, under pure bending, we know that this is going to be a circular arc here. And so we have some arc length ds and the associated area or associated beam length dx that deflected into ds. And then we can look at what's called the radius of curvature and the angle d theta, which is the rotation. So it's the rotation of the beam. Rotation. Okay, and then this is radius of curvature. Radius of curvature. Okay, so curvature, kappa, so this is called curvature, is just one over the radius of curvature. So if you're looking at a flat surface, the curvature is zero and the radius of curvature is infinite. Okay. Also, just looking at these triangles, these, these right triangles, of course this is all small deflections so we can ignore sines and tangents. We have that rho d theta is equal to ds, but ds is approximately equal to dx for the small deflections. And so then this implies that rho is dx d theta which then of course implies that one over rho, which is equal to kappa, 
is equal to d theta dx. Okay, so there's our first geometric relationship. It says that the curvature is just the rate of change of the rotation theta with respect to the unit change in x. Okay, now back to curvature. We have a sign convention for curvature. The sign convention is if a beam bends like that, if it bends up into a smiley face, that's positive curvature. Frowny face, negative curvature. Okay, that's the sign convention for curvature. Okay, so that's we're almost there. That's half the half the derivation. Okay, so we now need to somehow come up with relate kappa back to strain epsilon. See, we're after epsilon, and right now we only have kappa. So we have to somehow figure out how those are related to each other. All right, so let's draw some more geometry. So we have a beam cross or a beam length here, and let's. So that's x. Um, then we have a line segment EF, a distance y from the neutral axis. Okay, so that's y. It's applied moments here. So then that will change shape like this. Now, we can look at this. We know that this distance here is rho. This is length y. We know that the neutral axis here doesn't change length. That's why it's called the neutral axis. So as you bend this beam, it gets shorter at the top and longer at the bottom, and has zero change in shape here. So if this was dx there, it's going to be dx there. Let's call this E prime F prime now. And let's call this D theta. And radius of curvature goes all the way to the neutral axis. Okay. So now what we want to see is when we bend the beam and we measure some inscribed line, E prime F prime, and then we see how far it is from the neutral axis Y, we want to see what's the change in length of E prime F prime versus EF, and of course EF could also be written here, right, the neutral axis. Okay, so delta, change in length, is E rho, or rho minus y, d theta, right, that's the length to this line here, minus rho d theta, Okay, and then we multiply it out, we get rho d theta minus y d theta minus rho d theta. These cancel, leaving us with minus y d theta is equal to delta. Okay. And we want to know, you know, delta, if we're looking for strain, it's usually some delta over some dx. Okay, and so. This is our dx up here, so this d theta dx is going to be what we call strain. And we know that d theta dx is just kappa, so it's minus y kappa epsilon. Okay, so there's the strain. Strain measured for beam bending. Very simple. And if you plot it, okay, what you'll notice is that as if if the curvature is positive, which means we're in a smiley face uh, shape for the beam. Then y positive means that epsilon is negative, and that makes sense because that means um, as you move to the top of the beam, you're in compression, and then as y goes negative, you're in tension, and so epsilon goes positive. So if you were to graph, it would look something like that if you were to graph. Um, this is epsilon y, and this is y. This would be negative y, positive y. 
six. Okay, so let me just summarize quickly. We haven't really done much here. We're studying the geometry of beam bending by developing an appropriate notion of normal strain. We start with an assumption about the bending of the beam. We say that it's in pure bending. The reason we say that it's in pure bending is because that implies that the beam deforms into a perfect circular arc. And that's the key point. Because now what we can say is we can begin to relate the uh, geometry of bending to the geometry of circles, which is where we get the radius of curvature um, and curvature. And so now we have a nice geometry background in which to understand strain. And then we're able to see that kappa is equal to d theta dx. And then we just simply take one more step by looking at the change in length of this line versus this line at once the beam bends, right? So E prime F, EF minus E prime F, um, or E prime F prime minus EF gives us our idea of change in length of the line all over DX, which gives us normal strain. Okay.